we're going to talk about staying afloat in today's tough economy and specifically how that really impacts nonprofit organizations. From an article in the Chronicle of Philanthropy, beyond individual companies that are having hard times, a drop in the stock market also affects endowments and foundations. The typical foundations have lost roughly 40% of the value of their investments. That's going to have a huge impact on nonprofit organizations. Which nonprofits are most at risk? Here I've divided the nonprofit segment, if you will, into three categories based on size of budget. You have your small nonprofits, which are typically under 500 grand. You have your mid-sized companies, 750 to 2 million, and you have your larger companies, which have an over 2 million um, operating budget. In this economy, the ones that are going to be hit the hardest are going to be in that middle group. These smaller nonprofits are a lot more flexible. They don't have huge assets that tie up things. They have largely liquid balance sheets. Larger nonprofits, over two million, they have themselves well established so they're not going to be quite so volatile. The ones that are most at threat are the mid-sized ones with operating budgets between 750 and two million. Why is that? Well, they're not so flexible as the smaller ones. A lot of them have made investments in space, in fixed assets. Their balance sheets are not quite what they should be. As a nonprofit, think about where your money comes from. This is from 2007, 75% of their contributions from individuals. Foundations supplied another 12.6%, corporations 5%, bequests 7.5%. Think about what that means and then think about what's going on in the economy. Who's being hit hardest in the economy right now? Individuals. I would imagine everybody in here knows somebody that's lost a job or that has had trouble meeting their um, mortgage payments. People are getting very paranoid. They're holding on to what they have. The individuals that have been donating to you, a lot of them that will still donate to you may donate less. In a way, when you go through challenging times, it gives you the opportunity to clean house and kind of brush everything off and take a fresh look at things. Because you have to take a fresh look at things. The way you've been doing business probably isn't gonna keep working. So you have to find new ways. First of all, prepare for a sustained economic crisis. Understand your balance sheet and assess your, li your liquidity. Your balance sheet's gonna tell you if you're operating from a position of relative strength or, or weakness. Can you, if you had to pay all of your bills, all of your liabilities tomorrow, could you really do that? Then you have to quantify the challenge ahead by building um, scenario planning around, include key staff and other stakeholders in the planning. You communicate with all stakeholders. The worst thing you can do is to keep quiet because you're so worried about what's gonna happen. You have to operate with a heightened sense of transparency. The more you hide, the more your staff is gonna invent rumors, the more your board is gonna get paranoid and invent rumors, and certainly, the more your donors are gonna be paranoid about donating to you. And then you develop your organizational response. Let's see just where we are by going through a list of assumptions. The economy is in more trouble than a usual recession. It's gonna take longer than a year, 18 months to recover. It's gonna take a few years. Foundations have lost significant assets and endowments. Concerns, margins for survival are razor thin now. There is a perception of too many nonprofit organizations. Nonprofit organizations have basically quadrupled in number in the past 10 years. So there's a general feeling that there's too many of you guys out there, too many of us guys. I work for a nonprofit also. How does that impact you? Well, from a donor perspective, they're going to donate to the ones that they see as being competent and confident and with a real plan on how to get through things. Your challenge for a savvy nonprofit leader, you have to be savvy in these challenging times. What does that mean? We're going to scan the environment for trends. We're going to lead and manage. We're going to build transparency. How do you respond? You manage your mission, your people, your money, your performance, your partnerships and alliances. Your mission basically becomes your benchmark. Now, a lot of nonprofits have missions that are kind of touchy-feely. You've got to make your mission really hardcore. You've got to figure out exactly what your focus is. And that then becomes the benchmark for every other decision you're going to make. Is it in support of your mission? And if it's not, that's gonna be where you're cutting. By managing your people, that's not just your staff, that's also your board, that's also your donors, your board specifically. Money, you're gonna focus on your cash flow and your balance sheet. You're going to manage your performance. What do I mean by that? 
I mean that you're going to identify measurements that indicate whether you are succeeding or whether you're failing. Why would you want to do that? Because the more concrete you can get with that, the more you're going to get from your donors. They want to put their dollars where they see a good return on their investment. And if you can give them measurements that show that you are really focused and really know what you're doing and are having an impact, that's where their money's going to go. If they ask you for measurements, what difference you've made, and you can't just rattle that off to them, they're going to give their money to somebody that can. <coughs> Scenario planning is just a strategic planning method that really is a fancy way of saying what if. The basic steps in scenario planning is you assemble a team, you conduct an environmental scan, you develop your what if questions, you define the potential impacts for each op option, you create your financial projections, both budget and very key, cash flow. Cash is king, as they say. You prepare the culture for change, and then you develop your actual action plan. Your team is not going to consist of all internal people. It's going to be a hodgepodge. Typically, you're going to have four to eight members. The smaller the number of people, the less arguing there is. The committee can consist of internal management staff, board, volunteers and staff, external committee with key stakeholders. Get people that have nothing to do with your organization, but may be expert in something, a challenge that you're facing. Define everyone's role and expectations, and then organize your meetings. Typically, scenario planning will take you four to eight weeks. Conducting the environmental scan. Record the knowns. Brainstorm the unknowns. Develop your list of warning signs. What do I mean by warning signs? Well, identify the things that would be critical for your organization. And then brainstorm as to what would lead you to think that that's about to happen. Why is that important? Because the earlier you see the storm coming, the better you can prepare for it. Then you develop your options. That's where you come up with all the what ifs. What might impact the organization in the future? Is it going to impact clients? Community is it going to impact loss of funding, increased demand for services, revenue or expense changes. What's it going to impact? You select two or three of the most likely scenarios. So when that scenario happens and you're ready to act, you identify the impact of the scenario. Are you going to deal with staff cuts, loss of funding, client demand going up? Then based on all of that, you create your financial projections. What does this mean? It means you have your core budget and your scenario planning will feed off of that budget. You'll start with your budget and then plug in the what ifs. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about strategic cost reduction because no matter what your scenario is in these tough economic times, you're probably contemplating or already doing expense reductions. You approach it with some sort of logical methodology. You don't just cut across the board. It's completely illogical. You want to identify program by program, go through and see where you can trim. Change culture and communication. I've discussed somewhat keeping things transparent between your staff and your board and your um, constituencies, your donors. You need to discuss what's going on. We've all heard about the rumors at the water coolers. You know what the water cooler of today is? All the blogs, emails, Rumors can fly around and grow like crazy. They can get their own life. The only way you keep that from happening is to be honest with people and open with people. Doesn't mean you have to tell them everything, but you certainly need to keep a certain amount of transparency because they're just as nervous as you are. <laughs> Identify what you're going to do with your organization. What's the most important thing you're gonna to do to prepare for this year? What two things would you do if you lost 30% of your funding? Scary proposition. Think ahead because it may happen. What three things do you plan to do after today? I would just also throw in, sometimes when you're looking at your balance sheet and your income statement, this will help. Pick four things that you focus on. And by you, I mean get your board trained to do this also. So that anytime they look at that balance sheet, their eyes go to two numbers on that sheet to see if they're right. Same thing with your income statement. What are two critical lines on your income statement and train them on looking at that.